All right, so we've got Erin here and she's at her midpoint for her rotation. So she's gonna talk about her three biggest takeaways so far, 180 system, 180 physical therapy versus conventional BT. So I think my first big takeaway is the importance of a functional screen pre and post treatment. Um, I think it's a really good way of objectively measuring to see how well patient toler tr tolerated treatment and also to see to make sure that they're leaving better than they came um, to therapy because I feel like in conventional PT sometimes we just do exercises and then we send them on their way but we don't actually ask them or we don't actually see and objectively measure if treatment actually made them feel better um, so I think that's number one um, and so before we go to number two yeah. how long should it take you to screen so if you're going to screen somebody and you're talking about functional screen so head to toe every body part how long should it take you to do an effective screen to see what you need to see um pre-treatment i think it probably takes us around one to two minutes i'd say like a minute and a half like it's not long at all okay so it's a pretty good way of okay seeing what's going and on and then post-treatment that probably like 30 seconds i would say okay so just because you're screening doesn't mean that should take up so much time that you can't get anything done. And the other question is when you're screening, like how are you keeping, are you scoring them? Are you writing all this stuff down? No, it's more of just visually inspecting to see their active range of motion, to see how well they're controlling their squats, how their squat depth. It's more just visually inspecting. Um, so you feel like you're there with the patient, you're not checking stuff off um, and you feel kind of like you got everything down just from the visual inspection. All right, so take home message number one, always do a functional screen pre and post visit, every visit. Number two? Number two would be to make sure that your exercises are tailored towards functional um, movements. So I feel like in the past, at um, past clinics, a lot of uh, my exercises we're still targeting muscles, but it, yes, hip sideline, hip abduction may strengthen glute med, but it's not actually functional. Um, and you're not sure if that by doing that exercise, you're actually going to see um, carry over to functional movements. So something that would be a better exercise to do would be lateral walks um, with a band around either the um, knees or the ankles because you know that's actually going to be carried over to functional tasks. So I think that's a good thing to think about is to always make sure that your exercises are the most functional way that, and uh, most functional they could be. So we just talked about a functional screen. Now we're talking about exercises that are functional. So are you developing the thought process to what your exercises should be as you're doing the pre and post screen? Uh, yes, I think that's, and also while they're on the table and you're treating them, you're seeing which muscles are more inhibited and you're tailoring your exercises that you're going to give them later to which ones that were the least activated. So. so it sounds like what you're saying is not only are you tailoring those exercises to that specific patient, but it also might change visit to visit. So it's like if they made progress on something in the first visit, you're not gonna keep on giving them the same thing. You can actually change things and progress them as you go. Yeah, for a good example of that is there was one patient who was dealing with plantar fasciitis, but um, their dorsiflexors were completely fine on the table. And what was more um, likely that was inhibited was their everters. So we gave them an exercise to work on eversion instead because they already had dorsiflexion exercises, but we added in the eversion. Cool, all right, so take home number two, make sure that you are giving not only functional exercises, but patient specific and visit specific, presentation specific exercises each visit. Now number three. So number three, I think is the biggest one, at least for me um, as a student, is that try not to think or focus too much on the patient's pain. I know that for me, it was kind of hard to realize that because you want to make sure that they're not in pain um, while they're here. But the more you talk about pain, the more they're going to think that you are treating their pain where what you're really trying to treat is the root cause of um, their problems and get them to be back to their functional uh, status, their prior level, prior level of function. 
So I think the biggest thing is to avoid talking about pain, actually try to find the root cause. Once you find the root cause, treat it, get them back to functional tasks. They may be painful at first, but once they actually start using the correct muscles, the pain will gradually reside without having to ice, uh, stim, heat, all of that kind of modality work. Cool. Um, so I know you probably haven't said this in a clinic, but have you heard me tell patients I need to just stop thinking about pain? Yes. Yeah. And I think that's a, I think that's a big thing because people think that when they're here, they tell us, ow, that hurts, which is sometimes good to know which muscles do hurt or like which ones feel inhibited or that kind of stuff. But the whole point is not as to get the muscle to feel less painful than the second time we test it, but it's more about how strong it is, how much activation we're getting out of it. So yeah, you have said that a lot. Okay. Um, and how easy is it for patients to understand when you're doing patient education, talking about pain, mm -hmm. talking about the difference between weak and strong or facilitated and inhibited, how easy is it for them to understand something hurt a second ago, you poked around and now that something that hurt a second ago doesn't hurt anymore and you didn't poke around on where it hurt. So how, how much, how easy it is, how easy is it for patients to be educated when they actually feel what you're doing? Sorry, rephrase that. So when you're, when you're actually treating a patient yes. and you test something, it's inhibited, it's weak, it's painful, yeah. then you refacilitate, come mm -hmm. back and retest, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, that doesn't hurt anymore, yeah. but it wasn't what you were poking on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, sorry, I guess I'm not asking, <laughs> getting the question, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, it's way easier for patients to understand that pain doesn't have anything to do with their problem when you treat the painful area, when you treat an inhibited muscle, which is not at the painful area. So let's say they've got right side of low back pain, you oh, treat yes. their left hamstring, yes. all of a sudden the right side of low back pain That's is gone. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can say, so see how I didn't touch your right side low back and now your pain is gone, but I treated your hamstring. So then they start to clue in, yeah. oh, that makes sense. Yes, yes, so it's like another one is when you're testing their glutes and all they could feel is hamstrings turning on. It's You have to kind of tell them that yes, the, the reason why you're having pain in one area is because there are muscles that are inhibited in another. So once you treat it, then they're like, oh, well, that makes sense. All right, so there you go. So uh, students heading out on clinicals, if you're already in the clinic and you're having problems, you're getting frustrated, ask yourself, how often are you doing a full functional screen before and after every visit? How functional are your exercises and how patient specific are your exercises? Do they make sense? And if they don't make sense, does that explain why your patients aren't getting better and they're non-compliant with their home exercise program? And the big one, number three, like Aaron said, if you're focusing on pain and symptoms, you are, you are bringing yourself down to that level rather than getting past the symptoms and getting to the root cause. So if you're having problems in the clinic, it's probably because one, two, or three of those, th those things that Aaron just talked about are not uh, things that you're uh, being very effective with. 